In this video, I'll take you on a tour through the building process of the scaled tank that I built for my son to drive. The build took about a year, 3 months for the design and then 9 months to build it. It was finished in March 2005. As always, design starts on the drawing board. The criteria were that the tank needed to fit in my trailer, which is 1 by 2 meters. It had to fit through any standard door opening. It had to be a backyard build without complicated production methods. And it had to be safe for a child to drive in. And last but not least, it had to look like a tank. The hull is made out of 15 mm plywood sheeting. It is divided in three sections. The back section containing the drive system. The middle section is the driver's location. And the front section contains the battery pack and some parts of the compressed air gun system. Using this three section design makes the hull rigid and torsion resistant without having to add a heavy wood or metal frame. All panels are glued and screwed in place. In the design phase of the project, I thought that using a second hand joystick operated electric wheelchair would be the perfect base for a drivetrain. They are very rugged, reliable and complete systems that also allow the tank to perform neutral turns because they are able to turn the wheels in opposite directions. And here in the Netherlands they are readily available at a reasonable price. The wheelchair was stripped down to the drivetrain frame. The frame was then cut and welded to fit the hull and motors were remounted. They are 24 volt 800 watt motors with an electromagnetic brake. With the motors mounted on the frame it makes it a modular unit that can be taken out of the tank for maintenance when necessary. Because industrial tracks are way too heavy and expensive, I designed my own track set. The core of the tracks is a 3mm thick industrial drive belt with reinforcement plies. It is 120mm wide and has an endless length of about 3.5m. It has a vulcanized joint for optimal strength. On the outside of the belt, a 10mm thick PE plastic pad is glued. Another PE pad is glued on the inside of the track. This pad is 5 mm thick. The guide horns were originally made of 30 mm thick plywood, painted and varnished. Because they sheared off during test drives, they were replaced by PE plastic guide horns, the same material as the track pads were made out of. Let's get back to the assembly of the track. After the glue has set, six holes are drilled and countersunk in each pad and stainless steel screws are screwed in to hold both pads. For 88 pad sets per track, that's 528 holes. Keeps you busy for a few days. This picture shows the track in various stages. Starting at the bottom, in clockwise direction, the bare belt. The next stage is both inside and outside pads glued to the belt. The top shows the pads secured by screws, and the final stage is the guide horns being glued and screwed to every second pad. Using scrounged plastic and drive belt, the total cost of the tracks was around 50 euros, or 35 US dollar. That's what the stainless steel screws cost me. Because the tracks are mainly plastic, the weight is down to a minimum. They weigh 8 kilos each. The road wheels are 24 lawnmower wheels of 175 mm diameter. The first and sixth set of wheels on each side are mounted in a fixed position to the hull to ensure the tension on the track. The second, third, fourth and fifth set on each side are mounted on bogies to give it a more realistic look and improve traction. The drive wheels are 180 mm diameter Delrin plastic wheels that are machined on a lathe. The drive wheel is mounted directly to the motor. This setup allows a top speed of about 7 km per hour. It's safe and fast enough for a child to drive a 150 kilo weighing tank. The first idea was to use a friction drive system where a rubber wrapping around the drive wheel would provide enough friction to drive the track. 
Although it worked good on pavement, it proved to be useless in grass or off-road. Also, the track tension would become too much for the motors to handle. Luckily this problem could be solved with a small modification. Small PE plates were made of leftover inner track pads and added to the circumference of the drive wheel. The cleats engage every second inner pad of the track. When the track gets stuck, the cleats skip a pad. This prevents the drive system to break down or to jam and blow fuses. The idler wheels are machined out of PVC and contain two bearings each. They are mounted on a shaft that is held by two tensioners, allowing tension adjustment of the tracks through a slot on each side of the hull front. The completed hull was painted green and the drivetrain cover, a 2mm steel glacis plate and vent slits were placed. Also three track return rollers per track were placed and the inside of the hull was painted off-white, as tank interiors are. The turret is made out of 12mm plywood sheeting. It is fixed to the hull for safety reasons. The gun barrel is made of 70mm sewage pipe. The gun system consists of a small air compressor, a pressure vessel, some solenoid valves and a pressure switch. The missiles are foam stomp rockets from a toy shop, very light and safe to use in this setup. The air compressor is located in the rear of the turret. From there, a hose leads to the battery compartment of the tank, where the pressure vessels and valves are located. From the vessel, the air will blow from the tank as soon as the solenoid valve is activated, through another hose to the gun barrel. The gun is single shot, it has to be reloaded from the muzzle end after every shot. With a controlled joystick in center position, the tank is easily operated. The joystick provides proportional speed and direction control. On the right side dashboard, the switches are placed for blackout lights on the glacis plate, a horn, the main fuse for the drivetrain, a socket for battery charging purposes, the main kill switch and the buttons, switches and lights for the gun system. This dashboard is hinged to allow easy access. In this shot, the small hose leading from the compressor in the back of the turret to the air tank in the battery section is clearly visible. The left hand dashboard holds the front of a military radio set. The headset can be plugged into this radio. The radio is not operational, it just looks really good. The seat can be placed in two positions. High, with the driver sticking out the top of the tank and low, allowing the tank to be driven under armor. In the top of this picture you can see the periscope that is mounted in the top of the turret. This way the driver can see where he's going whilst driving under enemy fire or NBC conditions. In the final stage some de details have been added. Mock-up smoke grenade launchers made out of PVC sewage pipe and fans for the drivetrain compartment. An aerial is placed on top of the turret just for looks and to hold the small unit flag. A white flashlight located next to the aerial indicates the remote safety switch being activated when flashing. Red reflector plates are mounted to the rear of the tank. Unit logos of the infamous 42nd tank battalion, the Dutch flag and the one ton bridge classification rating are applied to the glacis plate and the rear of the tank. The tank was designed to be a safe toy for children, so for that reason some safety features are incorporated in the design. A remote kill switch system was installed to be able to cut the power system at a range up to 50 meters by a single push on the transmitter button. Also every single circuit is fused. The gun system has to be unlocked before operation by turning a key switch of which the key, together with the remote kill switch, is kept by the supervising adult. The gun system has been tested by myself standing in front of the tank and being shot at and I like to state that it is very enemy friendly. When shutting down the system slowly vents. The gun barrel is fixed to the turret and cannot elevate to improve safety. Please note that the tank is only operated under adult supervision.